Hi, this is Dizzy, and today I want to talk about the Gannon Stalk affidavit. Um, the affidavit was leaked, there was a gag order, and I want to remind everyone that the affidavit was written prior to Gannon's body being found in Florida. Gannon Stalk was an 11 year old little boy who lived in Colorado with his father Al, his stepmother Leticia, his stepsister Harley, who is 17, who is Leticia's biological daughter, as well as his own little sister, I believe. I've been in this affidavit for weeks and I'm going to go over some primary points rather than just read the whole affidavit to y'all, okay? Gannon Stapp was reported missing by his stepmother um, on January 27th, 2020. And a lot of craziness ensues after this. Um, especially one of the bigger things true crime people online are focusing on is the neighbor Rodriguez had video footage of Gannon and Leticia leaving and Leticia returning without Gannon. There's videos on YouTube that try to say you can see Gannon get out of the truck. I have not seen any real definitive proof he got out of the other side of the truck. Um, children are creatures of habit. They tend to hop in and out the same side. Not always, but just keep that in mind. Um, police did take footage from the neighbors security cameras um and he's gone over it and over it and over it and he just says definitively even through sound like the audio and everything else that he did not see or hear again and come home from their outing at petco etc on a day gannon was told he was okay t called in that he was going to be out from school that day because he didn't feel well what he didn't feel well is what he told what she told the father what she told the school was that someone had died in like a tragic car accident and it turns out someone actually had died in her past from a bad car accident the woman is just after the body was found in florida nine noon charges were added to the affidavit and those include The use of a gun, a knife, and or a blunt instrument to kill Gannon. Um, there's debate on this affidavit whether all of these tools were used or whether the possibility of all these tools being used. Uh, it could be either. I have no doubt the police already know which one it is now that the body has actually been found all the way in Florida. So, the day before Gannon went missing, um, Leticia Stalk who is called T, took a video in which you can hear Gannon crying in a very traumatized way. Um, I know sometimes you have to get on to kids and they cry, but this is not the same kind of cry. And at the end of the video, you can hear either him or his little sister or both referring to I'm bleeding or he's bleeding. Uh, and the next day is when he went missing. The neighbor who has the footage of T and Gannon leaving on the 27th has said that the day before he saw Gannon and the little sister playing and he seemed fine you know running around like a regular little boy and the next morning he said something seemed off he just didn't seem all there almost like he was drugged and I'll get to that later the affidavit says that blood spatter occurring from a violent crime was all over Gannon's bedroom walls um, and this is not stated to be a blood cough spatter, like many people dying or who have already died cough up blood. Um, the blood was on an electrical outlet, the walls, and it soaked down through his bedding, through his mattress, and onto the concrete through the carpet. Gannon's bedroom was in a basement so there was Gannon's bedroom, there's like an unfinished utility closet, and then the other younger child's bedroom on the other side. I've seen basements set up as bedrooms, so it's not like he was just like sleeping in a basement because 
I'm from the south where we don't have basements so to me basement had a scary connotation until I realized what the setup was. The affidavit mentions the fact there are motion detectors all over the house and that these motion detectors do take into account human movement versus like animal movement. Um, and throughout the day, Gannon went missing. T was all over that house. From the basement, up, in, out, upward, downward, upside down, head spinning. She was all over the house that day. Uh, so, in addition to that, there's also part of the... I guess recording of the motion sensing where a big chunk of it was cut out probably by T herself as I drink this tea and that's a big part of the affidavit because she was running around the house like a mad woman in a, a fairly short period of time and as someone who runs around the house like a mad woman this is even extra for me I would like to mention Letitia Stock's search history. Really, I need to just call her T because putting the Stock name on her is an insult to Gannon and the whole family. Um, she had been Googling out of state apartments with two bedrooms. This could be, it could be inferred that she was looking to move out of state with her daughter Harley, who was 17. And, um, she was searching this prior to Gannon's disappearance, you know, prior to her killing him. Therefore, there is definitely a level of premeditation going on there. I've seen a lot of people say, well, I thought, you know, maybe because of all the uh, resentment towards Landon, Gannon's biological mother, that she snapped and she just felt like a, a stepmom that was being used. The woman actively said she wanted to marry a military man, like just so she could be secure. She actively sought out military men and, and women, some women do this where they want to be secure. So they think, okay, military man will do that. Well, being with a man in the military requires a very specific personality and tolerance to being alone. And T is a narcissist, maybe borderline too. I'm not gonna diagnose her, but she really likes attention. She really likes to say, hey, first class, I think so. These are screenshots. This isn't me just mimicking her. She takes pictures like this with sunglasses on and brags. She's that type of person. Police believe that T killed Gannon on the afternoon of January 27th, which is the day he went missing and the day after the video of him supposedly burning the carpet. And she said, we're gonna have to sell the couch and was demanding him to say, promise you did it on purpose. To which at the end of the video, you hear someone say that he's bleeding. Um, and the police asked forget what I just said. Uh, the police also have discovered that T asked Harley to gather cleaning supplies for her, including baking soda and trash bags. Um, now as someone who distinctly remembers being 17, I do not want to put the heat on Harley right now. That's an impressionable age. She was raised by a woman capable of killing her stepson, who is very manipulative. And I also have a hard time picturing a 17 year old running errands for a parent without going, why mom, why? Just tell me why. Because I do think Harley might know something or have known something the whole time. In interviews, you can hear Harley saying, so what do I say to T? I kind of feel bad for her at this point. She is 17. The affidavit also states that they believe she stored Gannon in a suitcase, the suitcase he was found in in Florida eventually, in the trunk of her Volkswagen Tiguan. I'm tired of saying Tiguan. I'm tired of hearing it. I don't think I'm saying it right. Um, and allow me for a minute to go off about Colorado. They really dropped the ball. Let me tell you, if my kid was missing right now, I would say please check the closets, check my car, check any trunk in the neighborhood. 
I understand that it wasn't a suspected homicide yet, but when an 11-year-old boy goes missing and the stepmother has 80,000 stories, why didn't you check the trunk? I mean, y'all dropped the jaw, the, the ball on, on everybody. Like, there's so many Colorado cases where y'all dropped the ball. And that's coming from someone who grew up in a town where the police will harass you and then go, What are you going to do? Call the police? I'm just saying. The affidavit says they believe he was in the trunk that whole time. There were police at the house. Anyway, T disposed of Gannon multiple times. This is an indisputable fact. He was found in Florida. This happened in Colorado. Um, businesses like car washes, uh, car rentals. We know she put like 900 miles on a rental, uh, et cetera, are on the affidavit slash witness list. Um, just like Petco. I mean, I think even Google's on the witness list. I need to look back through it. But the witness list can help you whittle down some theories um not that we need many we know for the most part what she did um they found particle board near colorado 105 uh with gannon's blood on it and this was in late february i believe before gannon was found so she likely at least what this is implying is that she kept him in the car overnight with police in and out and then drove him somewhere else and left him there and then you know or he was in a car at the airport for some time she's not smart t has changed her story every three minutes since gannon went missing and even before if we talk about the video if you want to find the gannon stout candle video you can just type that into google and see you can see for yourself what you think of that um and she included a false rape story in one of these uh little news stories of what happened she comes up with um and shocker shocker it was a hispanic man and then the same man who came in and, and assaulted both her and gannon in this story you know he, he was hispanic and then he was black shocking um she refused to be evaluated for rape um and uh i don't think this is one of those situations where it's like oh well rape kits are pretty traumatic this was a situation where it's like oh well they're gonna find out nothing happened so i don't want the tests done uh so this lie right here actually bothers me and i'm even hesitant to say why but i'm going to uh, the thing is, is there's a pattern with T's lies. She, every lie is T trying to cover her tracks again. So when she says things like, wow, there's, there's, that was Harley, my cat Harley, not T's daughter, Harley. So the fact she came up with this like assault story where this man of color came in and raped her and her stepson concerns me because all of her lies are to cover her tracks and what if she was thinking well they're gonna what if she did something worse than what we already know and are already believing to Gannon the night before she killed him and she was covering her tracks in case they did find signs of that form of assault what if that's what happened the night before that she knew she couldn't come back from I could be wrong that is total speculation, but because of the pattern of her lies, that's real concerning. T has openly, for a long time, hated Landon, the biological mother of Gannon and Gannon's little sister. Um, and this was Al's first wife. He actually had an affair with T. Um, so... There was a lot of rumors spread by T about Landon, including that she had to take care of her kids because she was on drugs. Now, these rumors have been kind of debunked and Landon has flat out told what the nuances were of her dealing with some family issues. 
and not having the kids with her at all times. But here's the thing. If at some point in her past, Landon got a six foot mirror out and snorted every drug known to man at Disney World in front of 8,000 kids, she still does not deserve to have her son's life taken and doesn't deserve to, when her child goes missing, to be slandered like that. I don't care what her past was like because her past all the lot mostly all of what we've heard has probably been lies from T but even if it weren't nothing Landon did ever amounts to the malarkey disgusting nonsense gross crime T committed after reading through the affidavit I have a few of my own like thoughts and theories on this of course we don't have the autopsy results I'm sure the police do but I'm working off what I have I think that something she couldn't come back from on January 26th at night happened um I'm thinking head wound uh as the neighbor said that Gannon seemed off the next morning or even drugged uh, maybe she did drug him and maybe she rode around to the Petco that was way further away than she needed to go um, and that would explain why she was acting erratic in the Petco, glancing out to the truck, maybe seeing, you know, has he tried to get out of the truck? Has he, uh, slumped over yet? That type of thing. Um, maybe she was waiting for him to die or to find somewhere to, you know, push him off a cliff. She mentions, you know, Garden of the Gods a lot and they're hiking, um, I'm a pretty lenient parent myself, but if I had my kid in regular school and took her out because she was sick for a day, I don't think we would go hiking. Uh, and, you know, maybe when she realized on the 26th at night with the whole candle video that she really couldn't come back from whatever she did. Maybe she hit him in the head or did something that caused some damage that she could not uh, gloss over to Al. Maybe she was realizing, okay, Gannon's old enough now that he can get me in trouble. So maybe the next day he was either had some brain damage or was drugged. Um, I would like you to remember that this child was tortured for at least a day before he was actually killed. We don't see Gannon return home with T on the video from the neighbor. We just don't. There are videos on YouTube where it's like, well, you can see a shadow from the other side. I feel like if you look at anything long enough and hard enough, you'll see what you want to see. I mean, that's a proven fact with, you know, certain instances. So, um... They do believe that she returned home with him. Um, and since we don't see him get out of the truck, maybe he was in the truck bed already. Maybe he was already passed out and in a suitcase. I don't know. I don't know these things. These are things I think about. Uh, or are we going to find out that she left him in the suitcase on the highway where they found the particle board for a little while? But the affidavit says they think that he was in the back of the truck during the first crucial hours of the investigation. Um, the movement detected in the house by the motion sensors has me torn on this. Um, because if you look at the video of him leaving the house, he is so sluggish. So sluggish. 11-year-old boys don't move like that. And... I'm trying to remain a little professional, but I'm angry. Gannon was not a large child. The amount of blood loss that is cited in the affidavit isn't something that I feel like she could have done the night before and him still have walked to the truck. I just don't. Um, for now, I do believe she somehow got him home and killed him after Petco. Uh, I just don't think that was her original plan or she would have already had the cleaning supplies. And who doesn't have basic cleaning supplies in their house? Um, 
the frantic movement in the house, the cleaning, and most of all, the, that blood loss. I mean, she told the younger daughter that she couldn't go into her room or to see Ganon. Ganon was sick and sent her outside. Um, she definitely wanted the house to herself for a little, have herself a little cleanup session. And I'm sure the autopsy has revealed new information that I don't have. So a lot of my theories may just be void or I could be right. Um, but I have listened to the affidavit read multiple times. I have read the affidavit multiple times to the point that I finally was like, I have to make a video because I'm dreaming about the affidavit at this point. I would like to address some of the rumors that kind of float around in the true crime community or places where people talk about this case. Um, and first I want to talk about the Lumbee tribe. I don't know a whole lot about the Lumbee tribe. I know they're constantly trying to prove that they are legit. Um, and that's none of my business. However, I'm seeing a lot of people say that, oh, she walks like a Lumbee because Lumbee women walk like men or, uh, that's just their culture or whose culture is it to kill your stepkid? I don't care about the debate, is she European or is she a native? Who cares? I don't care what your ancestors went through. I don't care how bad colonialism messed with your heritage. None of that's an excuse to kill anybody's kid. None of that's an excuse for murder at all. Uh, and I don't think that it is proactive, I guess, to bring up her Native American heritage in relation to this case. I know I just did, but that's because I am seeing that so much. No. No. We're not going to try and excuse this by pinning it on a, a racial background. We're just not. Okay? Again, I would like to address Harley. She has not cooperated with the investigation, but I want to remind you, she's 17 and she was raised by T, who never wanted kids. This is like a known thing. She didn't ever want kids, but things happen. Um, and just because you don't want kids and you end up with kids doesn't mean that you don't care about them. Like, I always wanted kids, but not everyone does, and it happens, and you still love the kids. Just like you get married to someone with kids, and you love those kids. It can be complicated, but you do it. So the fact she's 17, she was raised by T, um, even though she hasn't cooperated yet and she bought the cleaning supplies and picked up her mom from various places. We don't know what she knows. We don't know why she's not cooperated. And please remember time away from T may help, you know, the scales fall from her eyes, so to speak. The affidavit also states that they believe due to how the words are typed with a period after and a space and then words from Gannon's phone, it was searched, can my parent find me if my phone is off? And, and it says parent. T is the one who did the search. Most 11 year old boys aren't gonna search that. And if they did, wouldn't they type parents? Unless they're only worried about one parent, either one parent cares too much and in an 11 year old boy's head, or one parent is dangerous. Freudian T. Oh, and get this, T did a false lie detector test. I didn't know those, hap those happened or existed, but you can pay to have a false lie detector test done where in this case, she was having questions like, did you kill your stepson asked? And she would say, yes. So that the lie detector came back with what she wanted it to say, or she said no to specific questions. However the questions were worded, she said the opposite of the truth so that the test would say she wasn't lying. One of those questions was, did you return with Gannon, essentially, on the 27th? And her answer, was a lie 
indicating she did because all the other answers were lies to fit her agenda of being, you know, I didn't do it. The person, the person who makes money off of these false tests was so appalled that he actually turned it in. He turned it in. This is someone who is okay doing false lie detector tests. Probably a good business props for that Machiavellianism, but he was so appalled that he turned it in. That says something. Galen Stalk received the brunt of so much wrong with this one person. And there was a lot wrong with her and it was always pretty clear there was something wrong with her. Um, and in her interviews prior to her being, her being charged and arrested, she was demanding apologies. Well, here's your apology T. I'm sorry that Al tried to see the best in you. I'm sorry that Al tried to see the best in you to the point that he let you into his children's lives. And I'm sorry that even Landon trusted you enough to let her kids even be near you. And that's not to fault them. I'm not going to fault people for trying to see good in others. So T, I'm sorry that whatever you did to Ganon, you didn't do to yourself. Thanks for watching everyone. And I will do more updates on this case. Uh, I did my notes earlier um, after reading through the affidavit again, just to get a few of the things that I found most interesting. This is a horrific case. I do think it should be televised and the best we can do is hope for justice because we can't bring Gannon back. So I will leave you with some pictures of Gannon.